I'm curious with Thomas Graham, um, what what you saw in practice and, and what jumped out at you in the game that leads you to think that this is something that he could make sustainable from week to week? Yeah, you know, I think the one thing he's done is he's grown over the time that he's been here uh, through uh, the offseason and through training camp. Um, and he's understanding the defense more and more every week, you know, that, and that's a credit to him. Uh, the preparation that he's put in and the coaching staff that's working with him from Ronell to Deshay to Mike Adams. Uh, and so, you know, that growth and that progress is good. And you saw that show up in the game. You know, he, he, uh, he kind of trusted his techniques, you know, and that was a big point of emphasis for him is to just know his leverages and trust his techniques. Uh, and then when you can do that and you, and you play your proper leverages, you can let your talent shine. And then that showed up in the game for him. What, what is the challenge of a guy who went a year without playing a college game? And, and did that have any effect on maybe a slow start he got off to here? Uh, you know, that's a question for him. Um, I'm sure it has an effect on everybody. I mean, we talked about it uh, early in the season also with a few guys that we've had on our team that uh, hadn't played football in a while. And, you know, it's, it's different. You know, it's different when you go through OTAs. It's different even in training camp. I mean, game speed at the NFL level is a different deal. Uh, and so you got to get adjusted to that. And it takes time. You know, you can't just uh, – it's not like riding a bike sometimes – where you just brush it off and you come back and play. This is a physical game. It's a fast game. And you need to make sure you're at the top of your game in every aspect to make sure you have good performances. Hey, Sean, um, when we talk to Robert Quinn, he's always so low key, especially when we ask him about like personal accomplishments, like the Pro Bowl and nearing the bear sack record. So I'm just curious from your perspective, um, what do you think drives him at this point in his career? Yeah, I think probably the same thing that's driven him uh, every point in his career. He's got a lot of pride in how he plays and the product that he puts out on the field. He takes a lot of pride in his craft uh, and he, he cherishes every moment that he gets, uh, whether it's a practice rep and a game rep. And so he, he tries to optimize all those. And, and that's kind of been who he is. Uh, and, and he goes at that thousand miles per hour every day. And so that's a credit to him. And you've seen the fruits of his labor. You know, he's done a great job this year uh, in terms of preparing. Uh, I think Coach Shuey's done a great job with him. Uh, and he's kind of understanding his role within the defense. And he's excelling at his role within the defense. Recording in progress. Mark Potash. Hey, Sean. Um... Roquan Smith always seems like the ad man out when it comes to league-wide recognition, whether it's the top 100 or the Pro Bowl again this week. That never seems to really bother him. Does it bother you at all? Yeah, it does. <laughs> uh, I'll take the bothering for him. Um, uh, it's, it's unfortunate. It's a travesty to me that, that he's, he's not uh, any of those accolades. He deserves every single accolade uh, that uh, one of the best linebackers in the league deserves. And, and he is one of the best linebackers in the league. And you can put on the tape week in and week out. Uh, I just want to make sure you guys uh, did your part in voting for him, right? Doesn't the media get one third of that? Uh, so make sure, Mark, you did your part in, in making sure that he gets in there too uh, with the Pro Bowl because uh, with the, the stats that he's got, you know, I mean, obviously he's got the interception for a touchdown. He's top five in tackles, solo and total. He's, he's at the top of every category in the league and his play and his relentless nature and his speed on the tape shows up every week. And so, you know, he, I know he, he doesn't uh, look into those things and neither do I normally, but uh, yeah, I'll, I'll take the uh, burden for him and, and I'll make sure that uh, people need to know that he, he is uh, one of the best linebackers in this, this league. And with, with regard to that real quickly, you know, he doesn't have as many sacks as Parsons. He doesn't have as many tackles as, uh, as Wagner. And, and I mean, so there's some reason for why these other guys are beating him out, but, but is there, you know, we see him all the time and you obviously see him all the time with what, what do you think is like the, his, his best suit that people don't see people who look for sacks and tackles, you know, don't see what's the most. Yeah. So I think, I think uh, one thing, one thing that, that you've brought up is the sack total. Uh, and, and Michael Parsons is a different linebacker in a different system. You know, uh, Roquan's playing a true inside linebacker position for us uh, all the time. So I think, you know, I think when people look at the stats, uh, like you mentioned, I've said that here repeatedly, uh, you can skew it however you want to skew it. Right. Uh, but the one thing you can't skew is that this guy is, in the top five in pretty much everything. And so you can look at whoever you want to look at and compare them to whoever you want to look at. But when you look at uh, the production on the tape and you see the speed and the instincts that which this guy plays with and how he gets uh, people around him better, um, he's kind of been the one constant for us this year. 
that's played in every single game uh, and that has been that productive every single game, week in and week out, his ability to get off blocks, his ability to diagnose, keen diagnose uh, plays and get to the ball carrier on a consistent basis is uh, unique. And I think that's what needs to be emphasized. <clears throat> Thank you. Dan? Sean, given all that you guys had to deal with last week with, with COVID, obviously you being separated from the team, the secondary being depleted, what were you most proud of in, in the production on Monday night, given all the obstacles you faced leading up? Yeah, I would say I'm most proud of the process that we went through as a staff and a, and a team. Uh, and in particular on defense, you know, the guys didn't miss a beat when I was out. The coaches didn't miss a beat when I was out. You know, uh, like I told you guys last week, we prepared the same way. You know, uh, we conducted our Zoom game plan meetings and, and I was leading those and, and the unit meetings. You know, I did my part of those unit meetings with the, with the coach, with the players as well. And so uh, for the coaches to pick up that slack and get the guys going during practice where I can't be there. Um, and then for the players to understand the game plan and take in that game plan and really own it. Um, and you saw the fruits of that labor uh, show up on game day. And, you know, I've, I've mentioned it a, a lot of times to you guys in this league or with our defense, if we can win our leverage and we compete at the top of routes and compete at the point of attack in the run game and use our hands, uh, we're going to be pretty hard defense to go up against. And we've shown that throughout this year at varying times. Uh, and last uh, week was a, a true 60 minute performance for us. And so I was proud of those guys to be able to do that. In particular against Jefferson, you, you guys obviously did a nice job of limiting him after the, the touchdown, but, but what do you think from that uh, can carry forward just in the way that you guys were able to take a, a top tier receiver and slow him down? Yeah, you know, uh, and, and that, that's a good point. I think, I think we just keep taking away our same message. If we trust our techniques and our fundamentals and we're able to go out and execute the calls and be on the same page uh, with our tools and our techniques, then we'll be able to do that. You know, we, we, we've had success against some top receivers in this league. You know, uh, week one, uh, the first time we played Devontae, we had some success versus him, held him to one of his lowest totals. We had success versus Jamar Chase uh, early in the year. Uh, we've had success versus the Raiders receivers, including their tight end. So we've had success versus some top receivers. And uh, our consistency has been our uh, issue putting together for 60 minutes on a week in, week out basis. And I think we're growing there. And I've said that this is going to be a growing process. And, we're, and last week was a culmination of that for a lot of guys. Pat? For the record, I think the Pro Bowl vote is coaches, players, and fans. We have nothing to do with it. You sure, Pat? I'm absolutely sure. All I just right. looked it up. <laughs> that sounds like you passing the buck. <laughs> I, I, I'm I'm curious as you look as you look forward with Robert. What? How would you like to see him finish the season? He's got a record right in front of him, and is that something you guys talk about? You know, is he aware? Are, are you aware about Richard Dent's, you know, being a sack and a half ahead of him? And, and do you, does that matter to you? Uh, I, I, you know, I, I'm sure it matters personally uh, as much as, you know, uh, we may not say. And, and the truth of the matter is I think he, I, and the defense are focused on winning games and trying to put a good brand of defensive football out there. And, and he, he understands because he's had success in it this year uh, with that defense. When everybody, everybody does their job, everybody's going to be able to reap some rewards from that uh, success. And, you know, it's 11 is one. And when, when all 11 of us are pushing in the same direction, Robert's going to have great success. Akeem Hicks is going to have great success. Roquan Smith is going to have great success. Deion Bush is able to go get an interception. Uh, you know, Thomas Graham's able to get some PBUs. Tease Tabor makes some plays. So the, the plays are going to be out there to be made. And, and it will continue to be out there for him, especially because uh, he's a dynamic player for us. <clears throat> Herb? Coach, obviously the rule is what it is, and I don't know what Tease is supposed to do on that play, but what is the coaching point that you give to Tease Tabor on that play to not be penalized right there? Yeah, the coaching point uh, for me is I got to learn the rules a little bit better. You know, I got I to do a better job of, uh, of uh, making sure that I get uh, great clarity in my teaching uh, on that a play like that. I thought he did a tremendous job of taking the shot and, and making the tackle. He avoided the old lineman. Uh, and, and didn't hit him low. And I understand uh, the safety part of it, and I'm, I'm all for the safe, player safety part of it. Um, uh, but he didn't hit him, you know, so, so I got to just make sure I, I do a better job, maybe uh, take his target point a little bit higher as he goes and takes his shot. And, and I'll do that. You know, I'll get better as, as I keep uh, adjusting with these rules. Um, but uh, I, I was proud of him. I thought he took a shot where he needed to take a shot and, and did a good job. Dan? Yeah, Sean, uh, Herb stole my thunder a little bit there, but to that 
a, a topic, what would you suggest be the modification to that rule or the, the modification to the interpretation of that rule? Because obviously, given that situation, it's really hard for a defensive back to, to do anything but what T's did. Yeah, you guys are trying to get me found by the league. Here. No, 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 just trying to get you to make some suggestions, <laughs> uh, put some suggestions in the suggestion box for them. <laughs> I'm not sure they got the same suggestion box I got. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I mean, the first and foremost thing is the player safety is important. Okay, and I agree with that. And I think I think you got to protect guys' legs all over the field. Uh, and I think probably the biggest thing I would suggest is try to uh, take a step back and look at the game in its entirety and see where we can apply that rule everywhere. You know, because uh, what, one of the hardest spots uh, is playing an outside linebacker at the end and you get a tight end that's technically in the tight end box uh, come across the field and try to cut your legs out. That's a way more violent play uh, that, can, that can cause risk to injury uh, than a DB trying to go make a tackle. Now, I'm not saying that's if, if he hits somebody, anybody, if anybody gets hit in the legs, it's always a scary play in this league uh, because you don't want to do that. It's the same thing as the head and neck area. So the target points are, are decreasing. So we got to, uh, as coaches, we got to adjust with those target points and how we teach it and how we adapt with the rules. But, uh, you know, I think, I think we just got to maybe take a step back and look at all the plays that, you know, if we're trying to eliminate low cut blocks, um, then we got to try to eliminate them where they're, where they're happening the most. 